Welcome to the Tech Support Guy Show. I'm Mike Cermak, known on the site as Tech Guy, and today we're doing something a little bit different. Usually the Tech Support Guy Show is about news and you know, recent events and things like that in the technology world, and usually behind me I have uh, Dan and Brian and sometimes Jake and some of the other guys with me to uh, talk about breaking news and computer news and so on, but today the guys aren't available. So I'm doing this on my own. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I've had some suggestions uh, come from people that we do uh, many different suggestions. One thing just mentioned again in the chat room was doing a live call-in type show. And there's there's problems with that, getting enough people you know to call in at the right time and whether or not I'm going to be able to come up with a useful answer for them <laughs> other than, say, post to the site where the smart people are. Uh, but uh, but one of the suggestions is to try and do some short videos, which I'm hoping this is going to become, with tips and tricks and things like that, reviews. So that's what today is. Uh, just last night, I got back from Florida with my family, took my son to Disney World for the first time, and so I thought this would be a perfect time to talk about traveling with technology. Uh, one of the things, of course, everyone brings uh, is a, a phone, and these days, a lot of times, that's all you really need, especially for a short trip. You can check your email, you know, look at Google Maps, do all of your necessary things right on the phone. Uh, I like to also bring an iPad. The iPad is a, you know, very useful for me. You, know, you can do all those things, surf the web, uh, you know, check email, all of that on the iPad, but it's also a great screen for watching Sesame Street to keep little ones busy when you're on the plane. Uh, you can play games on it. Uh, you can watch The Walking Dead, which is what I like to watch on it. Uh, you can uh, check in on flights. Once you get to your destination, you can use it as a GPS. Very, very useful. I might do a whole show just about different apps for, for uh, the iPad. But one thing a lot of people don't use that I found very useful is a uh, wireless router. And you might think, why in the world would I carry a wireless router with me when I travel? But that's what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, there's many different wireless routers out there. Portable travel routers is what they're usually called as a travel wireless router. Uh, the one I use and that I've been very happy is uh, from a company called Zuni. Uh, I'll bring up a uh, picture of it here and then I'll show you it in person. But uh, the uh, picture might be a little easier to see. You can buy them uh, uh, anywhere, including on Amazon. Uh, they're only $35 on Amazon. Uh, I've been very happy with this one. So what it is, it comes in this nice little box. And you know, first of all, I'll say the problem that I'm trying to solve with this, the reason I purchased a wireless router is that I've been many, many times in a location where I didn't have enough wireless signal to do whatever it is I needed to do. And as a tech guy, I'd like to be connected all the time. You never know when a server is going to go down. You never know when something's going to happen and I need to be able to get in and work on something. And I found it for some, you know, at, well, I know why. I was going to say for some reason at a lot of hotel rooms, there's just not a lot of Wi-Fi service where I need it. You know, over by the desk would be particularly handy. A lot of times you have a much st stronger signal by the door to the hallway. And you know, a lot of that is that these hotels were built for soundproofing and fireproofing and not so much for a wireless signal being able to penetrate your room. So as a result, in some hotels, especially those older ones that had Wi-Fi added later, there's just not enough Wi-Fi around. And a lot of hotels I've stayed in still have just the uh, the wireless LAN jacks. They don't even have Wi-Fi, or they have Wi-Fi in particular areas, you know, in the public areas in the lobby, uh, which is surprising to me, but I run into that more often than you might think. Uh, so anyhow, so what this, this wireless router does, the, 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 the solutions it provides is several things. Uh, first of all, it allows you to plug it into the LAN you know, uh, port, the RJ45 LAN port available in most hotel rooms, and it creates a Wi-Fi signal just like a wireless router would at home, uh, except it's small and portable. And so that's handy. Uh, the other thing it does, which is pretty neat, is it can also kind of act as a Wi-Fi repeater. You can set it up in wireless ISP mode, and what that does is it allows it to connect to a wireless network that is available and then repeat it through as a different ID, a SSID, and repeat it as a, a different wireless network. And I've used that several times where I would just plug it in somewhere near wherever, whatever part of the room I have the, the, the greatest Wi-Fi signal and have it repeat as its own Wi-Fi spot uh, for me to be able to connect to. And it just repeats that out. Another <laughs> little tip, another trick I've used with that is, you know, in some hotels, they charge a lot for the internet, but sometimes there's a free Wi-Fi access point just outside the window. So sometimes I can set this thing near the window, pick up the free access point from you know, wherever, whatever business or restaurant or whatever is across the street or next door, and get myself free internet that way. 
Anyhow, there's many, many reasons it comes in handy. Uh, the other thing I use it for is charging, and that's what I'll show you here. But it comes in this nice little case. It's small, it's portable. Uh, I've actually stuffed this case a little bit thicker than what it was originally intended for, and I'll show you all the gadgets I put in here. But what's nice about it is that I can just throw this in my laptop bag or in my duffel bag if I'm not bringing my laptop or whatever. It doesn't take up much space, it doesn't weigh much, and it has everything I really need electronics-wise for short trips. Uh, so if I open this up here and show you what I what I take with me, we've got several different things in here I'll talk about. Um, one thing I, I do carry with me now is a is a Wi-Fi uh, hotspot, uh, which is through Verizon. The reason I have that is my phone is through AT and T, and when I travel to some areas uh, like Orlando and Ocean City and places like that this summer, I've discovered that AT and T doesn't have service in these areas, and Verizon does. So, as a result, I got this. Um, this hotspot, and I'll take a moment just to talk about that. They call it, it says MiFi on it, but there was a different name for it, I think. It was, uh, I can't recall now. But anyhow, if you buy it through Verizon, it's very expensive, and you have to get a contract, and you have to pay whatever it is, a minimum of $50 a month uh, through Verizon to keep the account active and, and get so many gigs of usage and so on. It's it's an expensive endeavor, and, and I almost did that. But what I ended up doing is I bought this at Walmart. And it was about $100 to purchase it, but then it's like a prepaid cell phone. You pay to put so many gigs of, of, of transfer on it. So say I know, I, I happen to discover that I find myself in a place that has no wireless internet that I can use, no other internet I could use, I don't have enough AT&T service, but turn this thing on and I see I do have Verizon service, then I can go to Verizon's website or call through the phone and add you know, time to this essentially, pay them twenty, thirty, forty dollars, however many, how much uh, uh, bandwidth I need, and then it turns on, and I have internet through this. So it's been useful a couple times, and it doesn't take up much space. And the other nice thing about this particular hotspot, and most of the ones that are out now, is that it uses a standard USB micro uh, plug to charge it. Uh, it has a little battery, so it'll run for a couple hours on its own. But when you need to charge it, you don't need to bring a separate charger for it. It just takes a standard USB micro, the same thing my cell phone uses. Anyhow, that's come in handy. Uh, and the nice thing, again, you know, once you've bought it, uh, there's no monthly bill on it. You can go through and just turn it on whenever you happen to need it. So I might only need this thing you know, twice, two or three times a year, maybe, when I happen to be in that unique situation where there's no other internet and there's no AT&T service. But... Uh, but those couple of times, it's really paid for itself. It's gotten me out of a couple jams. So I've got that now. Uh, so into the actual container here, I, I carry all kinds of wires with me in this same little zip-up bag. I've got my Apple charger, which I use for the iPad, of course. It comes with a small little uh, Cat5 connector, so you can plug this into the wall in your hotel and plug the other side into this wireless router I'm about to show you. Uh, so that comes in handy. You've got, or, or I've got in here, the two standard USB plugs. I've got the USB micro and the USB mini uh, so that I can charge whatever devices I have with me, whether it's a phone or whether it's a camera or whether it's this little uh, Verizon hotspot I just showed you. And then what comes with the, uh, with the adapter is right here, you get a CD with some instructions and, uh, and software that helps you set it up if you're the sort of person who likes to do that. I usually go through the web interface of the device itself, but it has that and some instructions. I've stuffed all that in here. You can see this is a little well-worn. I've had it for, yeah, I don't know, a year or two now, and it's been traveling with me all over. Um, but, uh, but over here, this is the actual router here and the charger for it, or power supply, I should say, for it. And the router is right here. It's very small. Put it in my hand here just so you can get a little bit of a, uh, of a uh, relative size. Um, I don't have the dimensions up in front of me here, but you can see it's very small, very, very light. It weighs nothing. You know, it's, what, about the size of a pack of cigarettes, maybe? I don't know if that's a useful metric uh, uh, anymore these days, but uh, it says Zuni uh, connect on the front of it. That's the name of this particular Zuni router. They make other routers, but this is their travel router. It's 150 megabits per second. Uh, it's not 300 megabits per second, but honestly, if you're traveling, who really needs 300? 150 is way more than what <laughs> the, the hotel internet will be anyway. I'm not using it to stream you know, anything from another device, so that's fine. Uh, on the back of it, you've got a couple different connectors. Let me see if I can bring up a nicer picture so you can see uh, here. This is from uh, from uh, Amazon for you. Try and zoom in a little bit. There we go. So that's the back of it. And uh, 
you've got a couple different connectors there uh, on the right, or excuse me, on the left, you see there's the out. So it does act as a one port switch. So if you want to plug one side into your hotel room and then plug your laptop into the other side, you can do that and you still have Wi-Fi. That's kind of nice. Uh, the power supply plugs into the five volts on your right of that picture. And in you can kind of see it a little bit there. Uh, in between those, there's a little switch that says router or WISP. Uh, it's hard to hard to see in that image, but if you uh, look at it here, let me see how close I can get this here. There's a tiny little switch there. Yeah, it's hard to see that uh, switches it whether it's going to be a wired router or a you know, wireless router, traditional router, I should say, where you would plug it into your hotel's internet and it would act as a wireless router just the way you would expect it to. Or you can flip this switch to WISP, which is wireless ISP, which tells it instead of getting the internet connection from the wire to get it wirelessly. And that works the way I described earlier, where you can set it near a window or a door or wherever in your room uh, you happen to have the uh, highest. Uh, uh, amount of uh, signal. But what I really like about this particular travel router, and a couple others have now as well, is that it has two USB ports on it and uh, on the side of it. And what's cool about that is that I can use this same device then to charge my other devices. And here I'll bring up a picture of it there, see if that comes out better. <clears throat> so on the left there, it has a turbo USB port, which is both of these USB ports, I should mention, the only function they have, as far as I know, is just for charging. I don't believe they can do, um, I don't believe they can be used for sharing data. You can't plug in a USB hard drive on this and share it like some routers allow you to do. This is strictly for charging, but it's really useful when you're traveling. So I've got two USB ports there. The, the turbo one, I was going to say, gives you a little bit more power, a little bit faster, charges your device faster, uh, but normal is what they usually recommend that you use for charging, but it has both types on there. Uh, and so it's got two USB ports. This is the uh, power supply for it. Uh, for the device itself and it comes with a nice little uh, uh, Velcro around it so that you can kind of keep it neat and try and fit it back into the small case that it comes with But I, I love this because it comes in handy All I need to do is bring this little thing whether or not I actually need this to connect to the internet I still plug it in and then I can plug my phone into the one USB port plug my iPad into the other one You know if I need to switch around plug in other devices I've got all the different cables I need with me in this one little case and that's all I really need to bring. I don't have to bring, you know, three different chargers, three different, you know, AC-DC adapters with me uh, to transform the power for, you know, my iPad, for my camera, for my phone, for my, you know, Verizon wireless hotspot. If I'm bringing that for uh, my wife's phone, you know, because a lot of times she'll forget to bring her charger so I can just charge it on this as well, you know, and, and you have all of this just in one little kit. It would take more space to bring all of those different chargers than it does just to bring this device and you know the handful of different USB cables and you got everything covered. So I, I, I as you can tell, I'm, I'm a big believer in this thing. I, it's come in handy. There are other brands out there. This particular one, as I said, is from Zuni Digital. You can go to zunidigital.com to read about it. Uh, and uh, it's available on Amazon. You can probably buy it directly from Zuni as well, but on Amazon, through Amazon Prime, they have it available. It's just 35 bucks. Uh, and uh, search around, see what you find. Uh, they have great reviews on this particular one. One thing everyone seems to be saying about this is that they have great customer service, which is unusual you know, when you look at a lot of you know, consumer electronics these day. Um, these days, but uh, I, I haven't had a, a need to evaluate that yet. It worked great right out of the box, followed the instructions just like any other wireless router, really. Another feature this thing has that most wireless routers don't is it automatically detects IP conflicts. So if it detects that there's an IP conflict on the network somewhere, it'll automatically switch the IP addresses to fix it. And I haven't had time to really play with that yet, but that's they have this Intel IP uh, um, feature, which... I suppose it would be real nice if you happen to be caught in that situation and, you know, if you're traveling, you the less headaches you can have, the better. So anyway, so I'll throw all my cables and my goodies back in here. Uh, you know, we've, again, I've got my, my uh, Apple charger, my two USB chargers, my Cat5 cable, uh, my Verizon, just because I'm extra paranoid and I want to have make sure I can connect... <laughs> And again, for most people, maybe this is overkill. Maybe you don't need to be connected. Maybe connecting just via your phone or your iPad or whatever is enough. Uh, or maybe you don't travel enough to make this worthwhile. But uh, I've, you know, I had enough people ask me questions about this and and uh, you know, what sort of 
tips and tricks I have for, for staying connected when you're traveling that I thought I'd share this. And uh, again, it's come in, come in handy for a couple of times for me. And my biggest thing with it is even, you know, if you rarely need that stuff, just to have this small little kit here, and, you know, I'll give you some perspective again. It's, you know, about the size of my hand. It's just a small book. It's, you know, smaller than the Bible you'll find in the, in the drawer next to your bed in the hotel. And it weighs nothing. And you've got everything you need right near, there to charge all your devices, connect to the internet, connect to whatever you need to. Just gives you lots of options. And that's always handy, especially when you're traveling. So, uh, so that's my tip for, for today on traveling with it. I have a couple other things that I might share. Uh, I'd be interested to get your feedback about this, see what you think about it, see if you have any tips of your own in terms of traveling with uh, technology or anything else with technology if you want. Uh, you can reply back to uh, the show notes on this. Let us know what you think. Let let me know what you think about this type of show as opposed to the regular news format we usually do. And uh, maybe we'll switch things up every once in a while. Uh, if you go to techguy.tv, you'll find the old shows there. Uh, you'll also find the MP3 audio version of the shows and the video version of the shows. Uh, and there's also a button there for show notes. And again, if you click on that, that'll take you directly into the thread where you can reply back and give us some comments and feedback. And I really do appreciate that. Ah, and uh, <laughs> Hobo in the uh, chat room says, as a traveling technician, this is a necessary item. He says, I always carry a wireless D-Link router in the trunk of my car. You, you never know when you might need it. And if you're traveling you know, by air or something where weight matters, have, for 35 bucks, having a little wireless router to take with you is, is maybe a good investment. And, uh, and it serves so many other purposes as well. Uh, anyhow, um, let me know what you think. And we will be back again in uh, next month. You were aiming again for the second Sunday of the month, which is going to be September the 9th. Sunday, September 9th at 1 p.m. Eastern. Hopefully we'll have the guys back then. We'll do a more traditional uh, news coverage type uh, show like we usually do. And maybe the next time we'll switch it up again on you and do something different. Uh, thanks again for listening, and we'll see you around.